morning everybody and welcome to challenge number three. Say good morning Ellie. <laughs> okay, we're joined today by Fred. Some of you might have recognised him earlier. Um, yeah, I know you. I think he was on star number four, I think it was, um, when we did unconscious casualties. So he's here to help us with today's challenge, which is all about breathing problems. I know Ellie, I haven't got to that point yet. Ellie wanted me to say thank you for all your amazing designs of first aid kits from challenge number two. We saw some lovely posters, some pictures, and some of you have even made a first aid kit ready to take out on your outings, haven't they, Ellie? Yeah, we love them. So thank you, thank you so much. Okay, on with today, challenge number three, Ellie. So today we're going to be discussing two types of breathing problems. Two types, asthma and anaphylaxis. Can you remember what it was? Ellie remembers from um, the last challenge we did, anaphylaxis was a severe allergic reaction. And we touched upon it a little bit when we're talking about bee stings, because people can be severely allergic to them, can't they, Ellie? Yes. Not you, though, are you? No. We're also going to talk about asthma. So let's start off with asthma. What is asthma? Do you know what asthma is? No? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you. Asthma is really serious. But it's also quite common. But it's so serious that it does, unfortunately, it kills about three people in the UK every day. So we should never take it for granted. We should always treat it really seriously. So asthma is a long-term condition that we can't cure, but we can manage. And it can happen in people as old as me, Ellie, or as young as you and as old as Fred. It can start at any time in our life but it's more likely to have started in childhood, okay, Ellie? Now, as I said, there is no cure, but there are lots of simple treatments that can help you go about your daily life without having too much of an issue, just so it keeps our symptoms under control, okay? So we don't need to panic. So it is serious, but we must make sure we take our treatments regularly in order to make sure it doesn't impact on our lives, okay? Well, let's talk about asthma. Let's talk about what it actually does to our body and actually how it affects us. So Ellie, asthma affects our lungs and our lungs are what helps us breathe. And what happens is it causes the airways to narrow. So rather than having a big airway, they narrow. And then it results in us to have difficulty in breathing. And we have a very distinctive wheezy noise when we try and breathe, like a whistly noise. So let's talk about our breathing system and how we breathe. So I want all of you to take a big, deep breath. And what do we breathe in through then? Yeah, so we breathe in. We use Fred as a demonstrator here. We breathe in through our nose and our mouth. And then the air will travel down up into our upper airways, the pharynx and the larynx over here. And then it goes down into the trachea, which is the windpipe. And then in the trachea, really, it will split off into two large branches going into both your lungs. And those large branches are called your bronchi. Now our lungs are here and they're protected by our rib cage. We talked a little bit about our rib cage when we did CPR. And the rib cage and the muscles inside kind of next to the rib cage, those are the ones that help us breathe in and breathe out. But if you've got asthma, what happens is those airways, Ellie, they're very sensitive and they react to lots of triggers, like when people smoke, or maybe the dust in the air, or maybe the fur from Lulu, or maybe the pollen, and sometimes it can be brought on by exercise. There's lots of different triggers, okay? And when those triggers happen, our airways will swell up so much that they temporarily narrow, and therefore we have that distinctive wheeze, as we mentioned. Now, Ellie, if someone is wheezing a lot, or coughing a lot, then they could be having an asthma attack. And we know they're having the asthma attack because the chest will be very tight, Ellie, and it'll hurt quite a lot. And they might be using their medication more frequently than they normally do. And they also can't talk or maybe walk very easily, okay? So Ellie, we know if Fred's having an asthma attack over here because he will have problems breathing, and his chest will be quite sore, and he'll be using his medication, which is a pump, a lot more frequently than normal. Now, people with asthma, they normally have two types of pumps. They normally have a blue inhaler and they have a brown inhaler. Now, this is an example of a blue inhaler. It hasn't got the medication in this one, but it'll be blue. And this is what we call the reliever. 
and they might also have a brown one and that is what we call the preventative okay and also they might have a spacer now ellie just go hold that still for me and let's put this spacer the right the right way there we go so they might have a spacer the inhaler goes in this end and we can squirt the medication into the spacer which will then go over his mouth and nose and allow him to breathe in the medication a lot easier. I know, it won't fit your nose though, will it? <laughs> Only for Fred here and for humans like us, Ellie, I'm afraid. Now, Ellie, Fred must carry this spacer and this inhaler with him everywhere he goes because this is a simple treatment that can actually help save him if he's having an asthma attack. Okay, so he must carry that everywhere he goes. And this blue inhaler will be taken every single time he feels like he's got a breathing problem or he's very wheezy. The brown inhaler, and he said, what's the brown one for then? Well, the brown one is normally what we call a preventative. And that's what Fred will take morning and night if he was asthmatic. And he would take that morning and night to prevent an asthma attack from happening. Ellie says there's lots of different colours out there. There are. The brown one is always the preventative and the blue one is typically the reliever, but there are also other colours out there that they would use to relieve their asthma attack. Okay? So let's go over to Fred then. Let's imagine he's having an asthma attack and we know that, Ellie, because what did he say? Well done, yeah? His chest is tight and we can hear that very distinctive wheeze, which means his airways, rather than being nice and wide, they've gone a little bit narrow. So he's wheezing and he won't be able to walk, he gets tired very quickly. So the first thing we're going to do, Ellie, is tell him to sit down. <laughs> he is sitting down already, Ellie, okay. We don't want to lay them down, we want to make sure they're sitting up because we want to open up that chest cavity. And they can, if they want, put their hands behind their head just to open it up. You definitely don't want them going down like this, Ellie. So is Fred okay? Okay, Fred's in a good position. We're also going to make sure we stay calm. And then we gave him his inhaler through his spacer. We're going to put a puff in there. So let's pump it in, Ellie. Puff. Good. And then he's going to breathe in and out in his own time. And then we'll time it. And roughly, we can keep giving a total of 10 puffs every 30 to 60 seconds. Or whatever they've been told to do so by their doctor, okay? And if this doesn't work, we are going to make sure we call 999. But normally, it will work. And normally it will help relieve um, the asthma attack. And what happens is the airways will then start to go from small to big again so they'll be able to breathe. So that's good news. How are you feeling, Fred? Are you okay? Oh, Fred's better. Otherwise, we'd have to call what number? 999. <clears throat> okay, so let's just recap quickly. Asthma is a long-term condition that we can make sure that we have treatment plans in place for, and that are two different inhalers, aren't they, Ellie? <laughs> the brown one, which is a preventative, and the blue one, which is the reliever. And I know, Ellie, before you say anything, there are different colour inhalers out there as well that can help relieve the asthma attack. People should always carry their spacer and inhaler with them everywhere they go. And we know he's having an asthma attack because he'll have that very distinctive wheeze. When his airways, rather than being nice and big, they've gone a little bit narrow. <clears throat> so he'll be coughing a lot, wheezing and be very tired. And when that happens, we sit them down, we say, nice and calm, Ellie. We're going to be brave little shots, soldiers. And then we're going to give them their inhaler. So we put a puff in there for him and he can take it or we can help him, whichever is the easiest. And he can take up to 10 puffs every 30 to 60 seconds. And if it doesn't work... Or if he doesn't have his inhaler with him, because he's a naughty little boy, then we could call the ambulance because they're going to need medical treatment to be able to open those airways up. And what number is the ambulance? 999. Nine, nine. Well done, Ellie. So a lot of information to take in there, but asthma is serious and we should always look after ourselves and always make sure we carry our inhaler and ideally our spacers. And that's parents and carers you need to make sure you carry your spaces with you as well. Okay, Ellie? Okay, we're going to talk about anaphylaxis now. <laughs> Ellie remembers what anaphylaxis means. Anaphylaxis, Ellie, is, well done, a severe allergic reaction of the body's immune system. And the body's immune system is what fights against infection. And in this case, Ellie, it's quite a bit crazy. 
and it's going to overdrive and it overreacts and causes us to have anaphylaxis. <laughs> Ellie says she knows what causes it. Yes, Ellie, a bee sting. We talked about that in challenge two, didn't we? Bee stings can cause someone to have a severe allergic reaction. But also there's other triggers out there, such as some foods and common ones are, <laughs> she's very keen today, Common food triggers are things like nuts, well done, that's what you said, shellfish, dairy products, some fruits such as strawberries and raspberries, I know you like them, um, but also some medicines can cause people to have a severe allergic reaction and things like latex can as well. In fact, absolutely anything can cause people to have an allergic reaction and a severe allergic reaction to these things, okay? And it's also quite scary, Ellie, because you don't need to eat something to be able to get a severe allergic reaction. Sometimes you just need to touch it or smell it. It can be airborne as well as on things. And sometimes you don't even need to actually touch it yourself. You could touch maybe a ball that somebody else has touched as eating peanuts. And that can cause somebody to have a severe allergic reaction. Right, let's talk about then what we look like and what happens to our body when we have a severe allergic reaction. <laughs> Ellie says, yeah, we swell up. We do swell up and that's what affects our breathing. And that's why asthma and anaphylax are a little bit similar because they're both breathing problems. But the difference you see, Ellie, with anaphylaxis is it's normally we get a rash first that's very itchy and maybe we get a mottling of the skin as well. We might also get lumps appearing. And then, unfortunately, everything will swell up. Our eyes will start to swell and then our throat and our tongue will and then we can't breathe properly. And this, Ellie, this is when it becomes a medical emergency. And what number do we call? Nine, nine, nine. We always must call 999 if someone has a problem with their breathing, okay? Now, Fred being a good boy, Fred should have his medication on him. Fred, do you have your medication on him? Yeah, Ellie's checked. Ellie says he does have medication on there. And the medication that he might carry around is life-saving. There's three different types on the market at the moment. They're called auto-injector pens. And there's three different models, as we said earlier. There's this one here, which is called the EpiPen. There's this one here, which is called the Jex. And there's this one called the Emeraid. <laughs> Ellie says, why is there three different ones? Well, like anything, different companies make similar things differently. Look at phones, for example. Lots of different makes and models of phones out there. So they are a little bit different to use, but they all do exactly the same thing, Ellie. Exactly the same thing. What they will do will give Fred a shot of adrenaline, which will help relax his airways so he can breathe again. And therefore it will save his life, Ellie, okay? So we're gonna show you how to use each one of these things. And remember, Ellie, we only use them if Fred needs it. And we know he needs it because it can't breathe properly. Everything's swollen up and he can't breathe properly. And the first thing we're going to do, Ellie, is nine, nine, nine. Now, Fred has two auto-injector pens with him because he should always carry two around because inside there, Ellie, there's a little bit of adrenaline, but it might not be enough to last until the ambulance come. So he must ideally have two with him and he should be able to use them himself. But sometimes we get a little bit scared and sometimes we might want someone to do it for us, Ellie, okay? So if someone does get scared, you will now know how to be able to help them if they're struggling using the auto-injector pen. Now you only do this if it's a medical emergency, okay? Please don't just go around playing with these things. This is a life-saving medication and we should only use it if we need to. Okay, warning over. Right, let's go and help him. So the first thing I do, as soon as he's got a breathing problem, is I get him to sit down. And then I'll give him his auto injector pen and hopefully he can do it himself. But if he can't, we'll help him. So we'll take it out of the safety case, Ellie. Now this one here is the EpiPen. And with this one, there's a little saying. <laughs> I know you know it. It's orange to the thigh and blue to the sky. This will help her get it the right way up. So we're always gonna hold them like this with a closed fist. We're never gonna put a thumb over the top, are we? No, always like so. We're gonna remove the blue safety cap, like that, still holding it. And then we're gonna aim between Fred's knee and hip, along the seam line, and we're going to jab it in and hold it for 10 seconds, okay? Ellie, you just come down here while I just go and show him what to do. So you just go and sit there. 
So I'm going to hold the leg. I'm holding this like so. And what I'm going to do, I don't know if you can all see there or not. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to jab it in until it clicks. And I'm going to hold it for 10 seconds. Now I must make sure I hold his leg because I don't want him to wriggle and for me to miss. Now after I've done it, 10 seconds, this will then cover the needle so it's nice and safe and we massage it. And hopefully it will work. Now we only get one go at doing that, one go. So we've got to make sure we do it properly, okay Ellie? Because if we don't do it properly, then it's not going to work. And then unfortunately he might become unconscious. And what do we do then? Yeah, we check their breathing. And if they're not breathing, we do CPR. So we must make sure we use that properly. And then we dispose of that safely. And the JEX works the same way. It's got a safety cap at the top and the needle comes out at the opposite end. Let's just do it again to show you. So we're gonna hold this leg this time and we're gonna jab it into the outer thigh and hold it for 10 seconds. Ellie, how long do we hold it for? 10 seconds, well done. And again, the shaft will cover the needle so it's nice and safe, but you can't reuse it. So if you mess up, you can't get the medication out. And when I say mess up, let's say that you're just about to administer the thread and he moves and you go, oh, and you miss and you don't get the medication in. You can't get this out. So we might have to use this second one, okay? Now we also have this one, which to me, Ellie, I think is a lot easier to use. It's got one end, Ellie, so we just take get the cap off that end and the needle comes out of that end. And then here we jab it in, holding it for 10 seconds. But Ellie, what did I forget to do? Yeah, well done. She said I didn't hold the leg. It's very important that we hold the leg as we administer the medication, because if they move, you're going to miss. Okay. Now this is only going to be used for the person that it belongs to. I can't use it on myself, Ellie, or I can't use it on you. This is for Fred. These are Fred's medications. Do we all understand that, Ellie? It's a lot of information to take in, isn't it? Okay, so let's just talk to them and make sure everyone understands. Today, then, we talked about two different types of breathing difficulties. We talked about someone having an asthma attack and someone suffering from anaphylaxis. And even though they're very similar because it affects our breathing and there's a very distinctive wheezy noise, they are different, aren't they, Ellie? Yes. So with asthma, uh, what normally would happen was the airway is narrow, and that means we can't breathe, and we then need to take our inhaler, which we take in the form of a spacer as well. And that will help relax. And we can take that up to 10 puffs, and if it doesn't work, if we haven't got that, then we'll call the ambulance. With anaphylaxis, well, this is a medical emergency straight away. And even though it affects our breathing, it also causes everything to swell up and very itchy skin. And we would have um, two auto-injector pens with us at all times, okay? And we must be able to call 999 first and then administer the person's auto-injector pen. And we must hold each one for 10 seconds. Ellie says that actually some of the pens do have different times on them. Yes, Ellie, very clever. They do. Some of them do have different times on there, but it's much easier just to hold them all for 10 seconds. And we must make sure the patient doesn't wriggle around. We've got to keep Fred nice and still and nice and calm. And if he's not feeling very well, if he's a bit lightheaded, we might want to lay him down, put his legs up. But if he's got still a problem with his breathing, we're going to keep him seated up like this or seated like this. Okay. And then Ellie, what would we do if anyone goes unconscious? Yeah, she says we check their breathing, and if they're not breathing, we do CPR. Right, guys, that is the end of challenge three. Lots of information there to talk about. Let's go up and talk to the people up at the camera there, Ellie, because what I would like you guys to do now is challenge number three. And for that, I want you to be able to design some lungs. I know, it's exciting. Now, on your worksheets, there is some kind of clips that you can have a look at of people that have made lungs, just out of balloons and water bottles. Now, if you don't want to make one, I just want you to be able to design it. Or you can make a little film about actually what happens when we breathe in, where does the air go? Maybe a little stop motion picture that you could do. Be as creative as possible. Ah, uh, We would like to see some videos, wouldn't we? But we're quite happy to see your drawings because we love looking at your drawings and also your models. 
So the challenge is yours and we look forward to receiving your lovely pictures, your films and your models. Thanks for listening, guys. You please take care. Look after yourself and your friends and family. All the best. Bye.